Dante Exum's comeback makes zero sense. He was the number five pick, but was such a bust, people were saying some wild stuff about him. I think at this point in time, you should just hope that he turns into a guy that stays healthy and plays 75 games. A guy that can play in a basketball game and not pee down his leg. Right. What does that even mean? But after two years overseas, he's helping Luka and Kyrie dominate. Exum couldn't stay healthy more than a month, got body slammed playing in Europe, but is better than ever? He bricked shots for eight years in the NBA. Now hits seven threes against the Lakers defense. What did he do in Europe to resurrect his career? Well, Dante is actually a big reason people doubted Luka to begin with. They were so used to overseas players being overhyped. Andrew Bogut went number one, overrated. Andre Bergnani in 06, bust. You just don't see these guys up close against elite competition. And even when you do, they become Dante Exum. When he was 17 years old, Dante got invited to the elite Nike Hoop Summit with the best American prospects. And he lit it up with guys like Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, Julius Randle on the floor. Do you really need to see him play years in college? No. Plus, his dad was Cecil Exum, who was Michael Jordan's roommate in college. Cecil won a national title at UNC with Mike before playing in Australia. He personally trained Dante every day to become a pro. What could go wrong? So the Jazz took him number five over guys like Marcus Smart, Julius Randle, Zach Levine. In his summer league debut, Dante dropped 26 with 10 assists and national media loved him. Watch Dante play like six minutes of summer league, already decided he's gonna be amazing. He was even the featured player on NBA 2K15 My Career. He was like your main rival throughout the game. That is how much people predicted he would be great. And he was, at first. He started the season off the bench, but won the starting job two months in. Then his game changed. He kept deferring to the vets like Gordon Hayward because Dante had never been on a pro team before. He didn't want to make the wrong impression. But that led to the worst rookie season of all time. Of all qualified rookies in the three-point era, he was dead last in a ton of categories. The Jazz blew it by drafting an 18-year-old with no professional experience. Some guys do succeed high school to the NBA, like all-time talents, Kobe, LeBron, Dante, was only great on defense. He was quick and long enough to guard multiple positions, but that's a role player in the NBA, not the number five pick. But before he could improve, Dante tore his ACL playing for Australia. And when he finally came back, it got embarrassing. Hassan Whiteside snatching his shot like an adult on a playground. Jordan Clarkson dunking on his head. And to make things worse, he could not stay healthy. Dante missed 68 games with shoulder surgery in 2018. Torn patellar tendon in 2019. Every time he worked on his game, he got hurt. But the Jazz still believed in him. Every offseason, fans would say, this is the year our number five pick finally takes the leap. But every year, another injury. But then he returned just in time for the 2018 playoffs, about to be a free agent. And against the Thunder and Rockets, Dante was amazing, especially on defense. In a game two win against Houston, Dante guarded prime James Harden 22 times and held Harden to two points on those matchups. Some people even called him the Harden stopper. So the Jazz paid him 33 million that off season. But in a game against Detroit soon after, he rolled his ankle on his own teammate's foot. Dante knew it was bad. Just look at his face. This was like Anthony Davis, who's always getting injured, but without the AD production. So the Jazz traded him to the Cavaliers at 24 years old. He found himself out of the league 18 months later. Anyone would tell you that is the end of the Dante Exum story. But two years later, he is winning games with Luka and Kyrie. How is that possible? His first move was signing in Barcelona for the legendary Sarunas Jaskovic, AKA the God of European basketball. He knows what it's like to be dumped by the NBA, but bounce back. On Barca, Dante's numbers improved, but more importantly, he stayed healthy. 
The next season, he moved to Serbia for Partizan Belgrade and took a real jump. For Jelko Abradovic, the GOAT of European coaches, even Greg Popovich admitted to stealing plays from this guy. So Dante's numbers took another huge leap and he stayed healthy despite getting body slammed in one of the worst basketball brawls of all time. In Europe, it was easier for Dante to dominate because of his size at guard. It allowed him to go back to his strength of attacking the rim, but also add a consistent three-point shot. Instead of just improving the defense, his squad's offense was amazing. NBA teams are watching, but the Mavericks were desperate. They missed the playoffs last year with a terrible defense. So they traded up on draft night for center Derek Lively, signed Grant Williams, and gave Dante a two-year minimum deal. His family was so excited, they all moved from Australia to Dallas. But on the day Dante signed, his dad suddenly passed away at 60 years old. The man who dedicated years to his son's dream would not be able to see it come true. But this time in the NBA, no one expected a thing. I mean, dude flamed out in the league and played well in Serbia, great. But they found out Dallas is the perfect fit for who Dante is. He plays on and off the ball, so he can team up with Luka or Kyrie or run the show himself. He's a great cutter, so when Luka gets double teamed, Dante flashes to the basket. His game is to drive and kick as a point guard. But if a defense is gonna leave him open, oh, he will shoot. It's the biggest skill he picked up in Europe. In that Laker game, Dante was in the corner, got the pass from THJ, and buried the dagger three, his seventh of the game. And if you watch, Dante is always in the mix, making the right play. I mean, he doesn't always fill the box score like Luka or Kyrie but his versatility can impact almost every play. A big reason the Mavs are one of the best in the West is Dante's defense. Now he can't fix a defense all by himself, but how often can you sign a minimum contract player who defends the other team's best guy? The only thing that can end this story now is a big injury, but for two years in Europe and so far in the league, he has played well and stayed healthy and he still watches and reps his old team. He's not some diva who just used them to get back to the NBA. Look at his genuine smile when he hears their name. Well, it's great to talk to uh, a representative partisan. <laughs> partisan. <laughs> yeah, partisan, that's right, my friend, that's right. Dante is an example of a guy who was overhyped in the draft with way too much expectation. He should have been a late first round pick role player to begin with, but now with a healthy body, he landed on the perfect team to be the player he was always meant to be. Now, one of Dante's teammates in Utah was Donovan Mitchell. He is a big reason that the Jazz were even ready to move on from Dante. They already had the next star. But now, Spida could be on the move again. There are rumors he will be traded to one of four teams, so I go deep on every single trade. 